On this week's episode, I'm going to talk to you about how to get your hands on hard to find patterns. You might come across a pattern that you really want to knit. You see it on Instagram or you see it on Ravelry and there doesn't seem to be a way to buy it. So I'm going to talk about my journey with this particular sweater pattern, which was very hard to find and how I finally got a hold of it. I'm also going to be showing you a new pair of socks. I actually used one of the recipes in my book, The Sock Project. So I'm going to be showing off that pair and then doing a little demonstration of some of the tips and tricks I used whenever I knit these particular socks. I'm also going to be showing you a great free pattern that is on Ravelry and it is a great use of mini skeins. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I am overflowing with mini skeins. I haven't even bought any in months, but I feel like I haven't used them in a long time. They just keep accumulating and I'm not finding good projects for them. So this particular artist and designer, I watched her build this pattern on her Instagram channel and I was so excited when she released it as a free pattern on Ravelry. So I'm gonna share that pattern with you. I'm so excited to knit it myself. And then finally, I'm gonna do an end of month roundup. It's February now. So I'm gonna talk about all the things that I knit in January, some of the books I read, some of the shows I watched as we get ready for a new month. So all of that and more coming up. Hello and welcome to episode five of the OK Knit podcast. My name is Summer, I'm your host. I design sock knitting patterns in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and this is now the fifth episode of my new podcast. We're now in February. Oh my gosh, January. Um, I talked in my very first podcast about how much I love January, and it's true, I do, but for some reason, like, this January was really hard. <laughs> like it felt like it dragged on forever. And I think part of that was the weather. I mean, I think most of the country, we were in that deep freeze where it was just frigid outside. We had negative temps, like below zero temps, horrible wind chills. There was like a couple of weeks where it's like you couldn't even be outside. It was just miserable. So I don't know. I think that's why it kind of made it feel like January just drug and kind of lasted forever. <laughs> so I didn't love it as much this year. I'm kind of glad it's over. I'm really looking forward to spring and now we're in February. It's the shortest month, even though this year is a leap year, which I don't know why that's exciting. I mean, calendars are arbitrary. What is time? It's just something that we invented. <laughs> so it's not real, I guess, but it feels exciting when there's a leap year. It only happens once every four years. So it's kind of cool that this year we get a leap year in February. So I'm really excited about that. And my book officially releases February 13th. I have a lot of fun events planned. I'm going to list those in the description of the video. That way, if you're nearby, you might want to check them out. I'll be in Arkansas, Texas, two cities in Oklahoma. I'm also going to be doing a big Zoom event um, with Fiberside Chats. I'll have information about that as well. Um, so yeah, it's going to be kind of a big month for me. Like again, this is publishing a book has been a big dream since I was a little kid and I'm 43 now. So it took a while but it happened. And so this is, this is the month when it's out in the world, which is also a little bit nerve wracking because now you're all going to be able to see it. <laughs> and that feels a little scary. I have poured my whole self into this book. So it's a little bit terrifying that it's now out in the world and people can actually look at it <laughs> like, oh, that's a little scary, but also very exciting. I'm very excited for you to see it. Again, this is like, you know, the book that I wish I would have had when I started learning to knit socks. And as an experienced sock knitter, it's a book I'm happy to have too. I mean, I've actually used it when I've designed socks, like a, a recent pattern that I've been working on. I went back to my book and used that as reference. So um, it's been really cool, really excited for the book launch. But Let's get into our first topic today, and that is the sweater I'm wearing. So this sweater was a journey. Um, I first saw it pop up on Instagram, the lovely account Woodfolk, and there goes Beasley right on cue, barking at something, probably the mailman, <laughs> every time, every time. 
But anyways, um, I saw this particular sweater pop up on Instagram from the account Woodfolk. Um, a lovely girl named Julia who lives in Canada. She hasn't posted in a long time. She kind of goes in and out of posting. She'll post for a while and then she'll sort of disappear for a year and then pop back up. But her knitting is absolutely beautiful. Her whole aesthetic is beautiful. And so when I saw this sweater pop up on her Instagram feed, I was immediately taken with it. Wanted to knit it myself. The pattern, however, was not easy to find. And so that's kind of why I wanted to talk about this because how do you get a hold of patterns that you can't readily find on Ravelry or from the designer themselves? So this particular pattern is called Utsir, U-T-S-I-R-E. It's by Sarah Hatton, and it was published in a Rowan knitting publication. Um, and so Julia had said that in the caption whenever she posted this on Instagram, that it was just from an old Rowan publication that she had. And so I was like, well, I've got to find it. I've got to knit this sweater. And so First, I tried the designer, Sarah Hatton, and she was like, Rowan owns the rights to that sweater. You're going to have to contact them. And of course, I tried Ravelry. It was on Ravelry, but there was no way to purchase it. It was just a listing for the sweater, but there was no buy now button, no add it to your cart, nothing. <laughs> and I was not to be deterred. So after contacting the designer, searching for it on Ravelry, I went straight to Rowan. Their website, they have a ton of patterns on their website. They did not have this one. <laughs> and I was like, no. I even tried to find the Rowan publication it was in on eBay. And no luck. I just, I could not find this anywhere. And so what I did in order to get my hands on this pattern is I just emailed Rowan. I just, their little contact, you know, button on their website. And I said, I really want to knit this sweater pattern. I can't find it for sale on Ravelry. I can't find it on your website, but I'd really like to knit it. Please tell me how I can give you money so I can knit this sweater pattern. And they emailed back and they were like, yeah, that's an older pattern from an older publication. You can just have it. And they sent me the PDF to the pattern. <laughs> So the lesson here is that if you come across an older pattern that's maybe from an out of print publication, it doesn't hurt to contact the company directly and just ask them like, hey, how can I get this? It's not going to work every time. There are a lot of knitting companies that are now defunct that aren't even around anymore. There are, of course, older designers who are not designing anymore or who maybe have passed away. So it's not necessarily guaranteed to work every time, but with some of the bigger companies, especially that are still operating, if you happen to find a pattern that you really love, it's not for sale on Ravelry, um, the designer doesn't own the rights anymore, it's worth contacting the company and just sending them a line and saying, hey, I really want to knit this. You know, how can I give you money for this? And in Rowan's case, they just gave it to me for free. <laughs> And I was happy to have it. Um, it's a gorgeous sweater. I'm going to show you Julia's version um, that I knit. You know, this is what inspired me to knit it. And she used a really beautiful wool that was native to Canada. I ended up ordering this uh, wool from Knit Picks. This is Wool of the Andes. And I think the color is chestnut. I will look it up for sure, because I have this on my Instagram from like four or five years ago. So I'll make sure I have the right color for you and I'll put that in the description of the video. So, I mean, this sweater cost me less than $50 to knit. Wool of the Andes is really, really affordable and it turned out beautiful. And it's, I mean, again, the sweater's going on five years old now. So it's held up really, really well. And it's just a beautiful cable design. Um, it was knit in panels. It's not knit in the round, so you do have to seam, but there's some really great seaming tutorials out there if that's not something you're comfortable with. And seamed sweaters have a lovely, lovely fit. I know it's a lot of fun to knit in the round. I prefer knitting in the round. You're just going, going, going. You get in your groove, but knitting a, sweet, a seamed sweater really is worth it. Like they have glorious fit. It ups your skills. Um, definitely worth it on this beautiful sweater. I did make some modifications. So I'm going to throw up a little side by side here of the original photos from Utsir next to my photos when I finished knitting it. And so you can kind of see that the original pattern was a lot wider um, and more cropped. It had kind of sort of a boxy sort of bat wing style fit not really bat wing it was just it was just a lot wider and then it was more cropped and so i modified it to take out that width and then i made it i knit it longer and it was really easy to make those modifications you can see i'm going to go ahead and stand up here um 
you can see at the bottom that it starts out narrow and then this band right here in the original pattern this band just kept getting wider you made increases and gradually this stockinette band just got wider and wider and so all i did was leave out those increases on this little stockinette band in between these two cable motifs this stockinette band in the original pattern you just kept making increases and this stockinette band just got wider and wider and so what I did was just not do as many of those increases because I wanted a more straight up and down classic silhouette. I didn't really like that kind of wider silhouette and I didn't like the crop. I've never been a fan of crop tops, which is really unfortunate because that's all you can buy. <laughs> Have you noticed when you go to the store, you either are looking like an Amish prairie person or you're wearing a crop top with just your whole time hanging out. Um, there doesn't seem to be an in-between which is really fun when you're shopping with teenage girls because dress code at school is no crop tops. Well, what are they supposed to wear? <laughs> That's all they're making now are crop tops. So for moms and teen girls alike, it's a tough world out there if you're not a crop top person. And I am not. I just don't like the feel of air. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm cold natured. It just feels weird. So anyways, I knit this longer so that it wouldn't be as cropped. So those are the differences. Those are the modifications I made. They were really pretty simple. And of course I didn't like write them down. <laughs> I was not designing at this point. This was like 2018 summer who just made decisions on the fly, didn't write notes, just kind of, you know, did it on my own. So I don't have notes for you on a Ravelry listing or anything like that. But again, it was really simple. There were just a lot of increases on these little panels and I chose not to do them. And that gave me that straight fit I was after. So really beautiful pattern. Highly recommend knitting it. Email Rowan if you want to knit it because that's how I got a hold of it. And if you ever come across patterns in the future, whether you see them on Instagram or on Ravelry, there doesn't seem to be an immediate way to purchase it. You may have to do some digging, but emailing the company is worth it. In this case, it really helped me out with this particular sweater. So again, I love it. It's a great fit and I love cables and these particular cables are just so pretty. I'm really, really glad that I went to the effort of hunting it down and super grateful that Rowan just like sent it to me free of charge. That was really nice of them to do so. All right, now I'm gonna show you my socks that I knit this week. I am so excited about these socks. Um, we know I like color. <laughs> As you can see, I love knitting colorful, colorful socks. And so this week, whenever I sat down to knit a new pair of socks, I knew I wanted something really colorful. And I was really inspired by the colors of the London tube map, like their subway map. They have these really cool colors. There have actually been self-striping yarns inspired by the colors of the London tube map. If you live in London, you probably you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it may not even be called the London tube map. <laughs> I don't know. If you're from England and I'm saying that wrong, tell me in the comments so that, um, you know, I'm from Oklahoma. <laughs> we don't have subways. We barely have public transportation at all here. We just have big trucks on the road, um, massive highway systems. So we don't, we don't have tubes. We don't have subways. We don't have maps for public transportation like that. So I, I think it's called the tube map. Um, anyways, the colors really great on the London subway slash tube map. They're fantastic. There has been yarn inspired by these colors and I was inspired by the colors of this particular map. Wanted to knit a sock with them. So rounded up all my tonal yarns. I've done a video um, and I'll put a link to that in the description of the video where I talk about five sock yarn brands I love. And one of the reasons I love these particular sock yarn brands is they make great tonals and I knit with tonals a lot because I knit a lot of stripes, I knit a lot of colorful socks. So rounded up all my leftovers of my tonals to knit these particular socks and i used a recipe from my new book i used the two by two rib sock recipe from chapter seven to knit these oh my goodness i'm just dying i love them so much um you know colorful socks make me happy especially in the long gray days of winter when it's stick season 
everything outside is a bit dreary. You need colorful socks to cheer you up. And oh my gosh, these turned out just even better than I imagined. Um, again, it's a two by two rib. I've got the recipe for this in chapter seven of my book, The Sock Project, which you can find information on how to order in the description below this video. Um, yeah, I mean, look at them. So great. I love them so much. <laughs> I love, love striped socks, love multicolor socks. And these turned out so great. So um, use the two by two recipe in my book. I also use some tips and tricks in my book. All throughout my book, you will find different tips, different tricks to elevate your sock knitting, things that you may not have thought of before that you can do that just kind of give it that little extra just, mm. what is, mm? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I get nervous. Like, I know, like when I'm filming this, it's just me and my phone, me and my phone in my little office here. And, but then like occasionally I'll think, oh, but like, I'm going to put this on YouTube and like, like people are going to watch this. And then I get nervous and it's hard to be myself. And then I, I do things like, mm. <laughs> and, mm. so yeah, I, I get nervous. I'm just letting you know, this is, it's a little bit scary. I'm an introvert. It's hard to like, it's much easier for me to talk to a phone than it is to like a big group of people. Um, I've got several book signings coming up, so that should be interesting. There is no do-overs. If I make a weird noise, I can't just like cut <laughs> and then start over. I just have to pretend like it didn't happen and move on. Um, anyways, getting back to what was I talking about? Um, oh, rib socks. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Tips and tricks to elevate your socks and give it a little extra something special. Let's use words instead of random <laughs> noises. Anyways, the book's full of those. So I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you the little tips and tricks that I used in these socks. I'm going to do a little demonstration of how to get neat color changes on ribbing when you're working with different colors. And I'm going to show you how to avoid a jog. Whenever you're knitting in the round and you're knitting with multiple colors, you get this weird little jog whenever you switch to a new color. So I'm going to show you how to avoid that. Chapter seven of my book is all about ribbed socks. I gave you a recipe to knit ribbed socks. It's a great two by two rib. And then also a recipe for knitting thick rib socks if you want to work with DK yarn instead of fingering weight. Um, there's also tips and tricks in here. And some of these I'm about to show you um, for getting really good color transitions whenever you are knitting striped rib socks. And then you can also flip back. I've got uh, striped socks as well. And I give you some really good tips for avoiding that jog that you get, like whenever you are working with two different colors and you get that little jog, I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But it's really cool because, you know, you can knit socks from the rib sock chapter, but then you can flip back to other chapters to get really neat tips for different things you might be doing, like if you're incorporating stripes. So one of the things I want to talk about today and what I'm about to show you is how to get neat color transitions when you're working ribbing. Um, if you'll notice, whenever you do different colors in ribbing, you get those pearl bumps. You can kind of see on the red how you've got those white pearl bumps from the next color. Whereas if you notice on this, it's neat, no pearl bumps. And then on this one, no pearl bumps. So there's a really simple trick to avoiding those pearl bumps. Um, so I'm going to show you that in a second. And then I'm also going to show you a method for getting a neat transition so that we don't get a jog when we're knitting multicolor stripes or really any stripe, even if you're just using two colors. If you'll notice this sock, <laughs> you can see very clearly a jog. So this was the beginning of my round. And you can see that whenever I switched colors, I got a jog. And that's because when you're knitting in the round, you're actually not knitting a perfect circle. You are knitting a helix. So that first stitch in the new color is going to sit up higher than the last stitch in the old color. And that's why this doesn't look nice and neat and even. But as you can see on this sock, it looks totally 
totally even. We don't have any kind of jog. So I'm going to show you how I avoid that jog as well. And these are also tips that you'll find in my sock knitting book, along with tons of other just neat little tips and tricks like this that can just elevate your knitting and make it look a lot neater. So I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way and I'm going to show you those tips. All right, I'm ready to start my next color and that will be the red. Um, in order to avoid these pearl bumps, we're going to do a really, really simple trick to get a nice even transition between the colors. So I've joined in my red and hopefully I'm about to start knitting soon. I'm doing a voiceover because the sound didn't work for some reason. <laughs> so um, who knows what I'm talking about here? I'm just pointing at the sock. Uh, basically, I did a two by two rib. Each color, I'm doing six rounds per color. That's probably what I'm talking about while I'm pointing. So now I've got my red. I've joined that in and I'm ready to show you this little easy trick in order to get a nice even transition between colors with no pearl bump. So I'm going to start knitting and all I'm going to do is knit this first round in my new color in stockinette. And that's it. That's the trick. You are literally just knitting stockinette for the first round of your new color. No purling, just straight knitting. So you're going to keep doing that until you have finished the round. Um, it's really that simple. This will ensure that you don't get the pearl bumps. You get that nice smooth transition. And so I'm going to go ahead and knit around to the end of this first round. And then when I come back, I'm going to show you how to avoid that awful jog when you change colors. Okay, I've completed my first round in my new color, knitting just stockinette stitch. Now I am going to do my little trick to avoid the jog. And this is a really simple little trick. You are simply going to pick up the right leg of the stitch immediately below the first stitch on your left hand needle. You're going to take that right leg and you are going to lift it up with your right needle and place it onto your left needle. Then you're going to insert your needle into the first stitch and the right leg and you're going to knit those two together. And that's it. That's the trick for avoiding a jog. Also very simple. Now that you're on the second round of your new color, you're going to go ahead and resume your rib pattern. So knit two, purl two, and you will knit two, purl two, keep doing your rib pattern for the remaining five rounds of your color pattern. I was doing six rounds of each color. So the first round of the color, just knit even in stockinette, remaining five rounds, knit two, purl two, resume your ribbing. And so that's it. Those are the tricks. That is how we get our nice smooth transitions between colors. And it's also how we avoid the jog. You can see on this sock here how nice and even everything looks. No pearl bumps like in this other sock, um, which is still cute. This can be an aesthetic thing. You can absolutely keep the pearl bumps, you know, if you want to, like some people do, because it does look kind of cute. Um, obviously, I left it in this sock because I thought it looked good. So that's totally a choice. It's up to you. But if you don't want the pearl bumps, do that trick. And then, of course, the jog. We definitely want to get rid of that jog so that our sock looks nice and even. Our color transitions look really even. So to avoid that jog, do the other little tricks that I showed you. Um, and yeah. You get this nice, even sock. No pearl bumps, no jog. Everything looks really good. Again, I'm doing a voiceover here because the sound didn't work on this either. <laughs> so who knows what I was talking about here. I recorded this hours ago, but basically I'm just patting my little sock and, and showing you how good it looks without, you know, with the little tricks that I showed you. So the book is full of little tricks and tips like that. Again, like just to kind of elevate your sock knitting, things you may not have known about or things you may not have thought about. The book kind of has it all. Oh, good. I was talking about my books there. I made a guess and I was right. <laughs> so again, information on the book can be found in the description of the video. All right. So once again, I used the recipe for rib socks from chapter seven of my new book, The Sock Project, which you can find in the description below this video. Um, and then the tips and tricks that I used are also in the book, full color picture tutorials there. Moving on, let's talk about what to do with our minis. Um, if you are anything like me, this is... <laughs> 
this is your situation. And this handful doesn't even cover it. I have so many minis. I did an advent calendar from Hedgehog Fibers. It's been a couple of years ago and I've only done one advent calendar so far. It's these like speckled and like variegated minis that I'm not, I'm not using these. Um, I'm having a hard time finding a use for a lot of these like really colorful speckled minis. Um, and like, again, I have like 24 of them from Hedgehog Fibers alone more because I've bought Hedgehog Fibers minis like at yarn stores because they have them by the register. It's like an impulse purchase. <laughs> so got a lot of minis, need something to do with them. And I know that, you know, every year around Christmas, the holidays, there's a roundup of like free patterns or, you know, other patterns that you can buy that you can use up for your minis. Um, and there are a lot of really cute ones out there. This particular free pattern really caught my eye and I want to knit this so badly. Like I'm actually going to cast this on and I never cast on things that are not socks because I just don't have time to knit them. My job is knitting socks. So that is what I knit. That's all I have time for, sadly. Um, even though there's so many other things I want to knit, luckily I love knitting socks. So it's like not that sad, but this particular pattern, when I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm making time for this. I don't care. It's a beautiful wrap and it's by Jacqueline Verbeek. And I actually watched her knitting this on Instagram. She was kind of doing it a little bit at a time. And I was so excited when I saw that she put this on Ravelry as a free pattern because it's stunning and it's such a simple make. It is just, you know, half fisherman's rib. It's so, so simple to execute. It looks like it's gonna be a really relaxing, meditative knit. And I'd really like to finish it in February. That is my goal. We're going to try, I'm going to try and hold myself accountable. I've got a lot of traveling to do this month. I'll be traveling to Texas, Oklahoma City, Arkansas, doing book signings. And I'm always riding passenger. My husband gets car sick when he rides like passenger. So he always does all the driving, which really <laughs> works out really well for me, except that he's not the best driver. <laughs> I'm one of those people where I'm in the passenger seat and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I do a lot of, you know, and he's like, what, what? And I'm like, oh, you're, you're just, you got too close to that car. And like, you know, or oh, that car's braking. Did you see that car braking? Like, that's me. Um, there's a lot of really funny memes about people, you know, who ride past women specifically, I think wives, you know, riding passenger with their husbands, um, driving poorly. But in my defense, I, I, I will maintain he's not the best driver. He's not as good of a driver as I am. I am very alert. I am very aware of my surroundings, but he gets car sick and I do like having that time to knit. So I just go ahead and risk my life <laughs> every time we get in the car so that I can knit and space out and play word games on my phone. But anyways, when I, I saw this pattern, I was like, I knew I wanted to knit it. I've got a lot of traveling to do this month. So I really, really want to start knitting this pattern. So she used minis from her Hedgehog Fibers advent calendar, and she combined them with a Hedgehog Fiber tonal called Silence. I have used Silence in multiple patterns. It's one of my favorite tonals. It is a very beautiful beige, and it just pairs so well with bright, vivid colors. So if you're talking about, you know, extremely bright, mini skeins the beige in silence really like it just provides a nice modulating effect <laughs> and it just makes these these like really heavily speckled and variegated yarns shine without being too competitive with one another um you can see in the pictures that i'm throwing up here it really it's just gorgeous and it's just this big wrap it's like not a shawl. It's like a big, thick wrap that, and you can make it as long as you want, as wide as you want, as you want. Um, and again, the pattern's free. So I would grab it if I were you. I grabbed it. I am so ready to knit this thing. So that's going to be my project. We'll see next week. I need to order more silence. I don't have enough. I will put the link to where I buy it online in the description of the video. If you want to use silence as well, same as what Jackie used. Um, really great pattern. I, I seriously, seriously am so excited to knit this. So let's get rid of our minis. If you're planning on knitting it too, let me know in the comments. I'll be posting about it on Instagram. So maybe we can all share our progress together. I'm sure there's a hashtag for it. I will look on her Instagram page and see, and I'll put that in the description of the video.
All right, now it's time for our end of the month roundup. Again, I can't believe it's February already. It's like the second day of February. January is over. So here are all the things that I showed you in January. Um, of course, we had my book, like my sock book. I showed you that because that's like the biggest thing in my life right now um, is the sock book that's coming out. So I showed you some sneak peeks of the socks from the book and I showed you the book itself. Very, very excited for everyone to see it. Also scared to death for everyone to see it, but I'm excited that it's that it's almost out into the world. Um, I also showed you my hibernal hat. That was a new pattern that released towards the beginning of January. My first time releasing a hat pattern. It was based on my um, popular sock pattern, the hibernal socks. And so I wanted to do a hat version knit in DK weight yarn. I used a lot of hedgehog fibers, Tweety, um, hedgehog fibers, tonals, used some Brooklyn tweed in there as well. Really, really enjoyed knitting the hat, really enjoyed getting to share it with you and was very excited that a lot of you wanted to knit it as well. I've been seeing them pop up on Instagram and that's been really exciting. Um, I also shared these cute mismatched socks. These are the scattered pearl socks from my Hello Sailor sock set, which is still on sale. You can still get it for 20% off with code AHOY at checkout. Um, you can find the link to that in the description below the video, all the links to these patterns in the description below the video. Um, but anyways, yeah, we talked about mismatched socks. Mismatched, <laughs> that's hard to say really fast. Mismatched socks. We talked about those and whether you would like to knit them. And a lot of you did like on Instagram, you know, I posted them in a reel and a lot of you were like, heck yeah, I would totally knit mismatched socks. It wasn't something that I thought I personally would ever do because I like to follow rules and I like things to be orderly and mismatched socks seems like the very definition of chaos. <laughs> But I loved knitting them and I definitely want to knit more mismatched socks because I thought they turned out really, really cute. Um, I also, I actually did knit these in the month of January and really I knit the mismatched socks in January too. So quite a few things I'm showing you, I actually did knit in January, um, just not the hats. But I, I showed you the season socks. I was, you know, like it was so dreary in January. Like I said, like Oklahoma was just super cold, super gray, cloudy, rainy, snowy a little bit too. And I wanted a really colorful pair of socks. So I took my season sock pattern, which is an existing pattern that I have. I released it last year in August and I wrote up a cute little color work motif. And so I added that to the top. I kind of modified the socks where I knit this cute little floral color work first and then moved on and knit the rest of the sock with the season sock pattern. So I showed you those and I added that modification to the pattern. So if you already own the pattern on Ravelry, I just sent out an update with that mod in case you wanted to knit, you know, some little color work season socks too. And then it's now part of the pattern. So if you buy the season socks, um, it includes that modification. And those are 10% off. That particular pattern is 10% off until February 13th. You don't need a code on Ravelry, but use code SEASONS on my website and on Etsy to get the 10% off. But again, if you already own it, you own the modification as well. I added that to the PDF. Um, so yeah, I knit those fun little colorful socks. I did, and of course the ribbed socks, I already showed you those, you know what those look like, but let's just look at them again, because, <laughs> oh my gosh, so, so happy, love, 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 love how these turned out, and yeah, I used the recipe from my, my sock book, chapter seven, rib socks, and the tips and tricks, um, books I read, well, let's see, I started to read a lot of books, What's happening is that I love to knit and I've got a lot of projects going on right now. So I'm knitting a ton. Don't have a lot of time to read. Can't do audiobooks. Have tried multiple times. I'm a very visual person, not an auditory person. So like David will come in and be like, hey, uh, we're going to be paying, you know, the state of Oklahoma X amount for taxes, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. And then I completely forget <laughs> that he said that. And then when I go to do like our money stuff, you know, I have all my little spreadsheets and it's not in the spreadsheet. So therefore it didn't happen unless I am physically looking at the number and the entry, Oklahoma tax commission, X amount of dollars. It doesn't exist. It's not there. And so then David will be like, Hey, I told you we've got to pay this thing, you know, to the state of Oklahoma. And I'm like, Oh yeah, you did. You did tell me that, but it just went in and then boop. <laughs> so 
That's a roundabout way of saying it is the same with audiobooks. Stuff goes in and then it just immediately goes out. I can't do it. I've tried. So because I cannot knit and read at the same time, knitting always takes precedence, partly because it's my job, partly because I am truly obsessed with it. And once I like get my teeth into a design idea, I just can't let it go. I will be up until all hours of the night just knitting and watching it come together. So um, I did start a few books, finished one. Romantic comedy, Curtis Sittenfeld, loved this book. It is not your typical romantic comedy. She actually is kind of like, it's kind of like a satire of the genre itself, but written very charming. I mean, it's just very charming. She's not making fun of romantic comedies. She's basically, it's kind of like a love letter to the romantic comedy. Um, so yeah, loved that book. I started to read H's for Hawk, was loving it, but again, just kind of got distracted by knitting. I don't think I can do nonfiction right now. I think that that's part of the problem is that I'm interested in nonfiction. I love nonfiction, but I don't have um, the bandwidth. <laughs> that's what my husband works from home too. And he works for a software company. And so they use a lot of like corporate lingo and corporate speak. And so I hear all these little corporate phrases and then they get stuck in my head and then I end up using them. But I don't have the bandwidth to hold on to some really awesome nonfiction book right now because my head is just swimming with my work stuff. And so I think I need to get lost in fiction. I think that was my problem for the month of January. I was trying to read way too many nonfiction books, as fascinating as they were. So I started to read H's for Hawk, got distracted by knitting, started to read The Body by Bill Bryson, loved it too, got distracted by knitting, but did manage to read the Curtis Sittenfeld book. Um, I did start to read a fiction book, Hello Beautiful. Mm. <laughs> Did not like it, tried to like it. And then someone, like several people told me that it was actually loosely based on Little Women. It was like an homage to Little Women, which kind of made me want to go back and try again. But then I have like this, you know, teetering pile of TBR books. I just picked my book of the month book, which, hello, it's the beginning of February. So if you are in book of the month, it's time to pick our February books. I love book of the month time. <laughs> if you haven't heard of book of the month, um, it's where you like, you sign up. And I think I think it's $14.99. I could be wrong about that. You pay certain dollars <laughs> a month and then you get a free, like you get a hard, it's not free, obviously you paid for it, but you get a hardcover book every month. And every month they have a whole selection between five to seven, all different genres, diverse writers. Um, so like, you know, thriller, fantasy, literary fiction, women's fiction, you know, whatever. It's, it's a lot of different genres to choose from. And so you pick your book with your credit that you get, and then you can do add-ons for $11.99. And that's where I get in trouble. <laughs> I get my little credit and I'm like, oh, it's free, even though I paid for it. And then, oh, you can add another hardcover book for $11.99. And why not add another? <laughs> and I'm just like, add-on, add-on, add-on. But I only did two add-ons this month. I was good. So uh, I have three books coming from Book of the Month. I've got some good fiction coming in from there. And so hopefully February will be a better read month for me. Um, I do watch a lot of shows. I listen to a lot of music when I knit, but I also watch a lot of shows. And so some of the shows that I watched this month while I was knitting were Downton Abbey, seen a million times, don't care. I, I watch it frequently. I love that show. Um, so watch Downton Abbey a lot. Um, started watching the fifth season of Fargo. It's so good. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, Dot. Like, holy crap. Dot's amazing. So if you haven't seen the fifth season of Fargo, get on that. It's on Hulu. Um, it's amazing. Started watching that. Started watching True Detective on Max, the one with Jodie Foster. It takes place in Alaska. I think I'm two episodes in. It's okay. I mean, it's good. The first season of True Detective, nothing will ever top that. That was amazing. Um, and I felt like it's just kind of been like mm, ever since. But this new season is promising. Love Jodie Foster. She's great. So it's nice to see her back. Um, King of the Hill. I love King of the Hill. Also on Hulu. Designing Women. Also on Hulu. I watch a lot of shows from my youth. <laughs> um, I guess you do that as you get older. Like when I was a kid like moms and dads and like, you know, they were watching stuff like MASH, you know, MASH reruns on TV. And you do, you tend to, as you get older, you watch the shows of your youth. So Designing Women, 
you know, um, King of the Hill, love those shows. So that's what I watched. That's what I showed you. That's what I sort of read. And now we're looking forward to February. I've got some great sock designs coming. I'll be traveling and meeting some of you, I hope, on my little mini book tour. Got new books coming in. I'm excited to read those. And yeah, I'm excited to see what this month brings. So thank you for joining me again this week for episode five. It really does mean so much that you show up and watch my podcast. Um, it, it really means a lot that you come back week after week to watch the show um, and to leave feedback and comments. And yeah, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. It's, this has been an absolute blast. So I'm really looking forward to all of my episodes February. I've also got some special videos coming out. Um, the day that my book launches, February 13th, I'll be releasing a video here on YouTube that details the whole publishing process and anything that you might want to know about how to publish a book in the craft industry. Leave me some questions if you've got some so that I can answer them in that video because I'll be walking you through how I published a book, like how, how that came to be, how that came about. So um, that'll be coming up this month. Really excited for it. And thank you again for being here. You can find descriptions to just about, or links to just about everything I've talked about in the description below the video, as well as my email address, my socials. Feel free to email me with any knitting questions you have, life questions you have. I'm gonna be getting back to those next week. Um, I didn't have time this week. For an introvert, I sure do love to talk. <laughs> and I wanna try and keep these at a manageable time limit. So, you know, um, but I will be getting back to answering more of your questions next week. So feel free to send me some. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a really good weekend and I will see you here next Friday.